Yes, it is true, FIDE is planning on artificially adding points to more than 85% of players' ratings. I was shocked too, this is my reaction when I heard the news. And a thousand point ELO player gets 400, what? Is that, tr that's so many points. FIDE, ELO, inflation, just. But let's dive into the proposal and you can decide for yourself what you think about it. The more I read, the more I personally grew to understand the mathematics behind it and why this might make a lot of sense. Not that I still don't have a couple concerns about this proposal, which I'll get to soon. But let's understand why it might be necessary at all for FIDE to put their hand on the scale because this seems like a strange thing to do. Because as we understand ELO, if you this is the Lee Chess uh, Blitz rating distribution. So if you're 1500, which you see is the most frequent rating, you see about 18,000 uh, players on Lee Chess fall into this bucket, you, uh, and, and you lose to someone much lower rated than you, you will lose a lot of points. If you're 1500 and you beat someone much higher rated than you all the way down here, you will gain a lot of points. And so, you know, your ELO should fluctuate naturally and it should start to represent your true strength relative to someone else. That's how we understand it. And this yellow line here, you can see, so if you are 2000, then you are in almost the 90th percentile on Lee Chess. So let's talk about an example about why this nice, pretty normal distribution might start to break down a little bit. Let's say, so we know chess.com is a little bit of a more popular platform than, than Lee Chess by a little bit. Let's say 2000 on chess.com made an account on Lee Chess and they were 500. That's where they started at 500 on Lee Chess. And let's say there were a thousand of these people that we, we, we just dropped them into the Lee Chess bucket. So the 500 spikes here but by, by a thousand points. So, so what would happen? They start to gain rating, right? They're, they're going to start to crawl back towards 2000. But everybody along the way is going to be harmed a little bit because for each of those people, they're, they're sapping 1500 points out of the system by, 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 by gaining 1500 points. So, so, you know, if you're, if you're an 800, you're, 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 you're going you're gonna to start to lose points as those people, you know, keep, keep crawling up. And this is going to affect pretty much everyone along the way, whether you played them or not, because then every 800 is going to be like 750. And this is going to, this, this is basically going to start to affect everyone along the way. And then as they're crawling up, I drop another thousand of these people who are truly 2000 strength, but they're 500. So they start crawling up. They start sapping more points out of the system, et cetera, et cetera. I keep, I, I, I drop a thousand of, of these, uh, 2000 uh, strength individuals, but they're 500. So they crawl, they, 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 they crawl up the system and this really starts to mess everything up as, as you guys might imagine. It might not affect the people here at the top who maybe never play them along the way, but 1800s now will start to be 1700, right? And 1700s will, will be 1600. Everyone will be, even the same, even though they're the same strength, will have less rating. It will deflate all of these rates. And it would mess up this nice normal distribution. And so this is why, you know, they shouldn't start at 500. And if this were to happen, Lee Chess should probably do something about this. So let's see if something like that might have happened in real life. So there's this mathematician by the name of Jeff Sonas, who in 2011 sounded the alarm bell on this issue. And basically, so when we talk about what is ELO, so we were talking about points, like when you're 2000, does it mean, like, like, what does it mean? Like, like you have 2000 points? What, like, like, what does this actually mean? This is what it means. ELO is an expression of win probability, right? If you are 100 points higher rated than someone, then you should have a 65% chance of winning. If you are 200 points higher rated, you should have a 76% chance of winning, vice versa. So if you are 2000, you have a 76% chance of beating an 1800 and you have a 24% chance of beating a 2200. That's what it means. That's what it means. So we actually might un be understanding the recent phenomenon in rating change as probably inflation, because we're probably more attuned to just the top ratings in the world. Because this is what I understood. Because so we have a look here. This is the very first rating list ever. And uh, in, in January 1971, you can see here Bobby Fischer at 2760 is the highest, 70 points higher than the world champion at the time and would be for, for another year and change, Boris Spassky, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, this is funny if we search URS, the Soviet Union, so you can see 
um, just how many Soviet players there were. And when we look at this, so he's only 2760, and we look at the, the ratings of today, we see like six people who, who, who are there, even though there was no one within else within 70 points of 2760. We see that, that ratings have actually started to increase over time at the top level. We'd call this inflation. And this has nothing to do with like, you know, the players today are better than the players of before. This has nothing to do with the quality of the moves. This is truly a relative measurement, right? So Fisher is 70 points higher than, than, than Spassky. That's an expression of the win probability that 70 points should mean what, whatever that, that, that chart indicated a 60% higher win probability. And the reason why rating inflation at the top level has been increasing is just due to the larger playing pool that's been available, right? It's possible to get a larger rating on Lee Chess, and it's possible to get an even larger rating on chess.com. The is at 3,300, or Magnus 2 are at 3,300 something on chess.com. That's never possible really in, in the FIDE system because there's just a smaller playing pool. Standard deviation isn't quite as large. So we understood that inflation was happening at the top level of chess. But for all the rest of us, we've actually been apparently suffering from deflation. All the rest of us are apparently underrated, is how the theory goes. <laughs> so that might be a, a, a nice feeling uh, at first, but let's actually understand how that could be true. So this is what should be happening, right? You are that 2000, let's imagine for, for, for a moment, you should be scoring 76% against the 1800s and 24% against the, against the 2200s. Let's see if that's actually happening in actual FIDE rated games. And the issue is, so this is the actual results that, that Sonos got access to all these, Jeff Sonos, the math, mathematician, got access to all these games, and he plotted all, all the actual results. So that looks actually very, very similar. That um, So he found, you know, for, for every point here, that's a, um, you know, it could be a 1,200 playing a 1,000, it could be a 2,200 playing a 2,000, right? So are they actually winning where they should be? And we can zoom in on that. It looked very similar. But if we zoom in on parts of it, we see this. The black is the actual and the white is the expected. And here's the issue, is that the favorites are not winning as frequently as they should, right? So you are beating that 1800 only 72% of the time instead of 76% of the time, which might sound very small, but this is millions and millions of games. And that's not a, uh, uh, you know, a gap that large is not a coincidence at a sample size that large. And why is this a problem? Is because you are getting rated, the ELO system that rates you is expecting you to win 76% of the time, but you're, you're only winning 72% of the time. So on average, if you play a million games, you're going to be losing rating, right? Because you're only getting rating as if you're winning 76% of the time, but you can't actually win that frequently. Right, so on average, playing lower rated will drop you because the favorites, while still winning more than half the games, obviously, are not winning as frequently as they should. And in fact, it is quite the stark difference. For, for, for a rating difference of X, their true difference in strength is probably more like 0.83X. So all these low rated people are, are, are actually very, very underrated and they're outperforming their ability when playing higher rated opponents. Uh, so they're, they're more like 50 points stronger this is really a ratio of six to five. So, so that's how many rating points you're, you're losing uh, on, on average, basically, for, for each game. You're basically getting a 0.83 multiplier to yourself every time you play down. So that's a pretty rough situation, but this was in 2011. This was in 2011. How have things, so you sounded the alarm bell on, on this issue in 2011. How have things actually progressed since then? Let me find the chart I'm looking for. That's not the chart I'm looking for. This is the chart I'm looking for. It's gotten worse. <laughs> it's gotten much, much worse. So the black is where we should be. The black is where we should be, right? You see, so for a plus 200, we should be at 76% right there. That's where we were during his initial analysis, 2008 to 2012. It's gotten lower and lower and lower. The lower rateds are have gotten so good and are winning way too many games such that playing a lower rated is now like this is like a gap of you're talking like 10 percent almost that is a 10 percent difference um 
in in your expected score. So basically, you know, if you're playing if you're playing a lower rated, you should be getting you should be getting like um 10% more rated points for each win than you actually are getting because the ELO is 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 expecting you the ELO is is not crediting you sufficiently for now how hard it is to be a lower rated player. And you're going to lose a lot if you lose. So basically, it sucks to play lower rated players now. Uh, is kind of the issue that it's happening, and it's getting and it's getting more and more severe. So basically, you can Im- imagine back to this Lee Chess example, back to this Lee Chess example. If I were to drop a thousand five hundred, a thousand you know people at five hundred, or actually two thousand strength, and they kept climbing, and they kept climbing. You'd imagine like like a lot of these lower rated people would start to become very very good and very very threatening to these high rated people. All, all all of a sudden, that that all these low rated people would start to become very very underrated as these 500, 2,000 individuals sap points out of the system. And the trajectory that we've been having, so what has been the actual effect of that is the trajectory that we've been having, so initially at that 1971 rating list, like the minimum was 2,200 rating. And so this is this is like the distribution that, that we've been having. So here in 2003, the minimum has been raised to like 1,900. In 2013, this is where we are, and in 20, and so this is an, probably a, still even not so bad. We have a pretty nice normal distribution around this bar, around 2,000, right? Like like here, and it's curved out that way. However, as we get to 2023, there's tons of new people entering the system. There's tons of new people entering the system, but instead of these bars kind of increasing, only some of the bars increase, and instead of being normally distributed around here, we have a just a bunch of low rated, just a bunch of low rated as these 500 2000s, I think is the best way to conceptualize it, right? And those individuals, they just start to claw it out among themselves, but they're actually becoming really, really good. And, you know, so we have 2300s here. These are barely increasing in number, 5200 to 5500, right? 2800 to 3000, 12,000 to even less, right? So um, at my level, FIDE Master, International Master, Grandmaster, Hardly increasing in frequency because we don't actually play um, these these new individuals. But down here, a lot of these people are coming in, and <laughs> this is this is a crazy distribution of the new system. So I keep talking about these hypothetical 500 2000s that are coming in, right? But there's no chess.com and there's no Lee chess. So what actually has been happening? Well, you might be able to infer at this point, but basically these people are are often kids. They sign up at FIDE, very often having played a lot of tournaments, maybe in their national rating system or online or whatever it may be, but their true strength, when they start, they're given a rating of 1,000, which is the, the lowest rating very often, right? They're given this rating, but they're way better than that. They're actually way better than that is the issue. And this has been messing up the whole rating system. And it's been making ELO, which should be a prop, which really means nothing if it's not the correct expression of win probability, it's been making it predict incorrectly at greater and greater magnitudes. And this is a problem because it's the breakdown of really everything that ELO means. So essentially these kids, yeah, so they, they I mean, they, they come into the rating system uh, they have these very high K factors very often to fluctuate, but I think a lot of it, you know, you, you, you might even be someone like this or you might even, you know, know people like this, but they've played online. I think it, it, it is a lot of it. Like you can get to 2000 plus strength online. Like it's possible o- over a few years before you even play your first tournament. And then, so you start out very low and then you can rise all the way up. So, uh, and then you're, you're just really sapping points out of established players. <laughs> not, not that it's your fault, but that, that, that is the phenomenon that happens, and it's really not fair to anyone. Uh, and these people at the top seem rather insulated from it because they don't have to play against uh, these new uh, individuals. And especially the top top is quite insulated from it as their ratings have been inflating over time. As you can see, these people uh, are high, higher than Fisher's rating uh, in raw number, even though you know, the, 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 the gap between them and uh, second is not quite the same. So let's go to Sonus's actual proposal for the actual changes and why the changes might be a good idea and how it could fix this. 
So the first and the most dramatic one is what he calls compression. So compression means for every point you are under 2,000, we will add 0.4 points to your rating. So if you are 1,000, you will become 1,400, right? And he's talking about making 1,400 the new floor. So this doesn't affect anyone above 2,000, So, but you know, 85% of people are below 2,000. So if you're 1,900, you'll gain 1,940. And th th there's no arbitrary cutoff. So, so it's not like this, this hurts you if you're 1499 instead. Because So if you're 1495, you'll gain 202 points. If you're 1500, you'll gain 200 points. If you're 1505, you'll gain 198 points, right? So this is 0.4 points for every point you are under 2000. It's just going to be added to your rating. It's just going to be added to your rating, you know, at the start of a month without you even playing a game. So that, that is the proposal. There are a couple other, so that is what he calls compression, and he talks about some of the charts we put in this article. And yes, this is this is, this is another gr great example of just how crazy rating deflation has gotten and just how crazy people have been underrated. So for 1500 to play a 2100 should be a constant, you know, expression of ELO over time. You know, the win probability should be the same. However, when he published that article initially in 2012, it was 8% and he was already sounding the alarm bells. Now, in the past 10 years, it's nearly doubled to 15% is the probability that a 1500 will upset a 2100. That's crazy. That really shouldn't happen. It should be the same. It should be the same. That is what ELO means, or else it's meaningless, right? So <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is crazy. This is, this is another chart we talked about where we're getting further and further from the actual score that ELO is rating us on. That is the score that ELO is rating us on. That, that, that is implicit in its formula. The black line is what it expects for the formula to make sense, but that's not what's actually happening. And we're getting further and further from that, that the, the lower rateds are winning too frequently, apparently. So there are some calculation changes that he also proposes, Sonus, in his formula to prevent this issue from happening again. So the first one we talked about is 1,400 instead of 1,000. The second one is the 400 point rule. So the 400 point rule he, he wants um, reestablished. And what it, that states is that if you play someone who's 401 points lower than you or 1 million points lower than you, it doesn't matter. Your rating will be affected the same way. And so that, that prevents you from losing too many points in any one game. And the other is on the initial calculation. So this is interesting. Um, and I read... Uh, a, a lot about what he had to say in this, that for players having that very important first tournament, players have, right, they have that first tournament, they have a performance rating, and they get a rating. So very often, if they did very, very well in that first tournament, that their rating will start to go down. If they did poorly in that first tournament, their rating will start to go up. So basically, it's probably going to be an outlier either way, and they'll probably start regressing to somewhere, right? So what he's saying is add two additional draws against hypothetical opponents rated 1800 ELO. So in the calculation of your very first tournament, to bring you back towards the center either way, we're going to add two draws against 1800s, you know, even though that obviously didn't happen in, in, your, in your tournament. So that will help bring people towards the middle a little bit on their first tournament, which is going to be kind of interesting because, you know, uh, if you play someone... There's no like provisional ratings in, e in FIDE is my understanding. So if you play someone that they're 2000, right? It doesn't matter whether they, they got to 2000 by playing a million games or by playing five games. So it's very important that you get that initial rating correct because it, it, it'll uh, affect everyone else that they play against. So yes, and then the, this, is a, this is a pretty niche one. Uh, and then this talks about compression. So that's... Pretty interesting stuff. This is what he, so we have this chart, as we saw, of the current distribution of ratings. This is what it'll look like now. The most obvious change is that we'd get everybody above 1,400. And the justification of this is the most important part, because these seem like very arbitrary numbers, right? Uh, adding 40 points, um, or adding 0.4 points for every one point you're, you're below 2,000. And this other adding two draws at eighteen hundred, like this, this is this is so arbitrary. Yes, there's a problem. Is this going to work? So the evidence that Sonus presents that this is going to work is he backtests this. So the most important part to me is part five simulations. 
So he runs a simulation between 2017 and 2019. And, and to me, everything rests on this or else you're just making up numbers, right? You're just making up numbers. Here. You're like, yeah, well, when, like every 1,000 or 1,400, like, like anyone could have said any number. So what he's looking at is if we had implemented these changes in 2017, we had implemented compression, you know, br br bring bring all, all thousands up to fourteen hundred. We implemented this two eighteen hundred uh, uh, draw rule for, for for your very first torment. Are we starting to look like that black line? And the answer is apparently yes. So here's the twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen. Here's what actually happened: is the yellow line. So as you can see, plus two hundred was only at 70% in actuality when it should have been at 76%. We're talking about even more massive gaps at some other points here of up to 10% gaps between expected and actual. But the blue line is on the simulated behavior. So with these adjustments, these calculation changes with compression, compression means adding these uh, rating points to everyone below 2000. With all this, this could have worked in the 2017 to 2019 changes and ELO could have been actually accurately predicting people's ELOs could actually accurately predict their results, which is what we need or else, or else it means nothing. So that was good evidence to me. Although I would have probably liked to see this on a larger sample, ideally. I don't know how 2017, 2019 was picked. That was probably the years for which he had, um, had data available because to me, everything rests on that. And I mean, this blue and black line match very well, much better than the yellow line does. Um, I think this is a phenomenon that has been discussed that at, um, GMs were finding it harder and harder to beat lower rateds. Not that it still didn't happen with high frequency. You can see the yellow line as it gets to a high point, you know, this is, this is 90, 95%, but that it is becoming more difficult. I think there are some other factors potentially other than so there was there was covid where like uh, you know a lot of young players especially uh were able to still improve their, so their truth strength increases even though their elo does not because they're not able to play tournaments right so then they, they, they come out of covid and come sapped even more points from the rating system or, or i think in general the birth of online chess or really just um the addition of so many people to the rating pool um allows people to get very, very good online before they start playing over the board, which continues to sap more points out, out, out of the pool as people are not discovering their true strength just from FIDE rated tournaments, right? ELO kind of relies on that happening. And, and it becomes, it, it, it becomes an issue and it becomes not, not fair to anyone. Uh, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I am kind of excited about these changes a little bit. Uh, you know, I joke that when I when I saw this at first, that that you know, I I, I unfortunately lost this past weekend to a much lower rated opponent. I, I moved my king to the wrong square, and suddenly I was basically mated. I was like, so basically that wasn't my fault that I blundered. It was uh, it was rating deflation's fault. Um, I mean, yeah, my opponent my opponent played played quite well, but uh it's it, it gets tougher i think the other great equalizing factor potentially that is worth mentioning is the is the great equalizer of openings right that 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 is that you're able to learn an opening i think quite quickly that there are chessable courses that there are um stockfish and the database and everything it's just online and what used to be maybe more protected knowledge on the part of more experienced players and often titled players now anyone can learn very quickly which is which 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 is a good thing but it presents a great equalizer and presents also the, the possibility of you know these upsets can happen more maybe because of um good opening preparation or things like that i don't think that explains the gap we see here as much as the other factors but it is something certainly worth noting. And my hope is that we don't have to do this again. That would be the big issue for me is that if we consistently had to keep putting our hands on the scale, 
right? So like back testing like this is is I think very very important. I'd I'd like to see you know maybe a mechanism built in. So like here's what would automatically happen if X or Y or Z were to happen. But this is a proposal. So so just in terms of the actual news, um, this 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 had been talked about for for months. People were um, invited to write in their thoughts. So earlier this year, the Qualification Commission initiated a review of this, and it's the this committee, which includes several grandmasters, um, and Jeff Sonas. Uh, this 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 committee reviewed it, and they put forth his recommendations. As you can see here, they put forth these recommendations, and it, it will be voted on by the FIDE Council on December fourteenth. So this is big stuff. It seems likely that this is going to happen. That so you know you can expect those points added to your fee day rating um, shortly. Unfortunately, it will not be affecting my fee day rating. But ideally, these points will trickle up as as it will be more doable to beat lower rated opposition, which are getting stingier and stingier. All right, everybody. I really appreciate you guys watching, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks so much. Like and subscribe, and have a great day.